Guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musicians, still here with the mad hair. Still overdue for a haircut, life gets in the way. Uh, all right, so today I wanna show you a cool trick for manipulating samples. And this is basically how to create those gritty lo-fi samples that we all love. Whether you're using this in hip hop or down tempo or electronica, this is really an incredible way of taking your tracks and just adding more warmth and dust and just making them sound more vintage and cool. So I'm gonna show you how to do this real quick. Um, I'll show you what the end result is um, on this one track. I've just applied this technique to one sample on this full song, but really I would recommend, uh, well, I've applied it to a few, but I'm just gonna show you how to do it on one. Uh, but this is something that you can really do to every track or to most tracks in a song. And if you add them all up together, you're gonna get this really cool grainy sound. So part of it's getting there on the one track, but then I'm gonna leave it to you or maybe a future video to show you sort of the effects of compounding this across an entire song where all these little noises and pops and hisses all come together and then you start manipulating them again and you get even cooler sounds. So this is the end result here. I've just got it soloed here. It's on the uh, Dr. Octorex, so we'll just listen to that. And I think I've used this song in another video, but... Um... <laughs> So it's sort of a guitar-ish strum is what it sounds like, but really lo-fi and washed out. And now let's listen to what the original sounded like that I sampled. So how do you go from that sound to this sound? Mysterious brooding really cool. Um, well, I'm going to show you that, but I'd like you to take a minute to like and subscribe to this video first, if you haven't already. And also, if there's any sampling tips that you have questions about or that you'd like to share, please leave a comment about it. And um, the whole reason I actually got interested in this style of thing uh, technique was listening to Tycho's albums. Um, and his stuff is just so, it's sort of post rock really but like it's got this warm lush just incredible sound to it and if you haven't heard it i totally recommend t checking out i think dive is probably my favorite of his but just check it out like it sounds like everything went through 82 pounds of tape but i read some articles with him and he said resampling was really how he got his sound and i wanted to figure out what that was so this is sort of the beginning of my journeys on resampling and hopefully this will take you along on your own resampling journeys. So let's figure it out. So this initial track here that we took the sample from is an NNX, or sorry, is a um, contact library instrument called the George Duke Soul Treasure uh, thing. <laughs> it's not called the Soul Treasure thing. It's just called the Soul Treasures. And um, it's basically like a Dr. Rex where you've got a bunch of loops that you can either uh, trigger individually um, or that you can, uh, you know, uh, have play in a loop on their own. And let's see. Um, I feel like I probably did. Did I do something to the tuning of this? Um, I feel like I did something to this and I don't remember exactly what it is, but that's not really the point. This is the starting sound that I started with. And the point is how do you get from this starting sound to the final starting sound? So what I did was I took that track and I bounced it. And I bounced it to a wave file, which is here, just by right clicking on it and hitting bounce in place, um, which creates this next file, which is here, which is basically the same. <laughs> But then what I did was I clicked on this track and I timed, I hit shift control and I actually time stretched it 
I pulled it so that these uh, tails would sustain a little bit longer. Um, and it doesn't look like that from here because it looks like they're the same length, but if you compare the two, you'll... So they sustain almost twice as long as the initial one. So that gave me a lot more sonic space to work with. And then what I did was I took the bounced track and I went to slice edit mode, which allows you to set the slice points. And I right clicked on it and I said, bounce to rex loop. So then I created a new rex loop, which is this one here. Um, so with the rex loop, this is where the real magic happens. Um, so I'm doing basically three things on the rex loop and you can do anything that really gets your heart pumping. And there's a lot of different moves you can make. So I'll probably make different videos showing some of the techniques you can use. But what I did on this one is I did insert a Kramer master tape plugin, which is just like probably my favorite, one of my favorite new VST plugins in Reason 9.5. It's not a new plugin in the world, but I love it. I'm putting it on so much. It's a great just tape saturation plugin, but it's also a great uh, delay, like slap delay. And it's also great for wobbly, noisy, like lo-fi sounds. And it's also great sort of as a compressor, a, a tape compressor. Um, and there's actually a link down below, an affiliate link that'll get you 10% off if you pick this up at Waves. Um, usually it's on sale for around 29 bucks, but when it's not on sale, it's a lot more than that. So just wait till there's a sale, but you get 10% off of it if you click through the link down there. And so we'll turn the uh, master tape off. I've got some flutter, some noise on it, so. <laughs> And so it's just creating a bit more stutter and noise and wobble. You can kind of do that similarly with the echo, but this I think is just easier to dial in and it sounds a little bit more noisy and natural, but that's not where most of the sound is coming from on this track. The two main moves are that I transposed it using the global transpose from this down to this. And the thing is that Rex's, many of the samplers in Reason, uh, their pitch shifting engines aren't perfect. Like they sound fine if you're within one or two pitches of the original note, but if you bring it down extremely, then the sound starts to morph. So you should always really, if you're looking to sample things, experiment with extreme uh, changes. And then you could also even take it another octave lower using this keyboard here and go. Um, and the other big move I'm doing here is I've got the LFO built into uh, Dr. Octorex down here in the middle. I've got it set pretty slowly and just the ever so slightest amount of it going to the oscillator. And what the oscillator does is it's controlling the pitch of the sample. So that's sort of causing it to uh, wander and wobble in terms of pitch, which gives it that old school sound as well. So let's, I mean, yeah, you can see how little it was on, but. And it's just sort of these three moves that the pitch shift, the wobbly tape and the wobbly oscillator, and then the stretching of the sample out to give it more sustain that get you to where I am right now. Um, and I would probably add more grit along the way, but the point isn't to make every thing sound, every single track on your song sound like it's 800 years old. It's basically to make all of them sound different from different ages and different times and places and match together if you're doing hip hop, because samples were pulled from all sorts of different albums. Some, you know, recorded in the forties, really lo-fi. Something recorded in the eighties that was pretty hi-fi. Uh, some stuff in the 60s and 70s that might have a lot of scratches and dust. So I hope you experiment with this. This really works on almost any genre of music. 
Um, but it's sort of a hip hop technique. I would totally recommend you do a lot of experimenting because you know you can put other great things to put here would be bit crushers, delays, uh, vinyl uh, emulation plugins, anything really. Um, and then also trying to chop up the samples differently. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like and subscribe, leave a comment how you're using uh, resampling and reason. And I hope